What's the word, y'all? I feel like I'm getting, I'm getting deja vu, man. I feel bad for the Clippers fans. And that's saying a lot. My team has been very bad for a long time. I feel bad for Clippers fans because every single season, we see the same report or a report that is very, very similar and it sets everything back. Yesterday, we got this report from Shams. Clippers star Kawhi Leonard underwent a procedure on his knee in the offseason. The franchise said today Leonard will be limited to strengthening his knee to start Clippers training camp, but team officials are optimistic about his progress. I just don't understand. I just don't understand. I don't believe we're ever going to see a full, healthy Kawhi Leonard season for the rest of his career. And that's sad to say. One of my favorite playoff, individual playoff runs of all time is him with the Toronto Raptors. And when he decided to go to the Clippers and Paul George decided to team up with him, there was no world in my mind where this team didn't at least make it, make it to a finals. I thought they was going to win at least one, but they didn't even make it to the finals. This, These guys, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George together for five seasons, they have three playoff series wins to show for it. That is mind-blowing to me. And now Paul George is in Philadelphia, and Kawhi Leonard is going into this season with an injury. And the reason, like, I, they didn't say this, right? They don't know. Actually, let me read the other report. Clippers, Lawrence Frank said he doesn't have a crystal ball on whether Kawhi Leonard will be ready for opening night. But Franks added, I think Kawhi is going to have a great year. When healthy, he's one of the greatest players in the world. And I cannot refute that last sentence. When he's healthy, he's one of the greatest players in the world. Unfortunately, he's not healthy. Ever. Last year, almost 50-40-90, 23 points per game, all NBA second team, got to the playoffs, injured. Two games played, couldn't cut, couldn't run, couldn't defend, couldn't hit a shot. It's unfortunate. And, and he said he don't have a crystal ball and whether or not he's going to be available. I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's not, just based on the track record. We never really get a full scope of what Kawhi Leonard is dealing with. And I, I'm not even saying that we deserve to know his personal um, his personal injury history and everything. But I've seen this before, and I'm not excited about it. And I don't know what, I don't know what you do to get out of this if you are the Clippers. They don't own any of their own first round picks until 2030. In the year 2030, I, Uncle Alert, in the year 2030, I will be th 34 years old. I don't even, that's the next time they own their own destiny with their first round picks. They have a few swaps with OKC, but as y'all know, OKC is going to be what, the one seed every single season for the next decade, it feels like. So yeah, they will have first round picks, don't get me wrong, but. They won't have their own. They won't have, they won't control their own destiny until I'm 34 years old. My daughter will be in third grade next time they control their own. That is crazy, bro. That is absolutely crazy. Um, This is, it's just wild. Because in January, they gave Kawhi Leonard the big extension. Three years, $153 million. Again, this was the healthiest season we've had of Kawhi since he was a spur. So yes, this is a lot of money for Kawhi Leonard. But at that time, I guess it made sense. He was turning the corner when it came to his health. We get to the Olympics. We hear Kawhi Leonard is being sent home. We're like, what the hell is going on? There's conspiracy theorists. It's because he's New Balance and not Nike. The reality is you saw videos of him walking around the hotel when they were in training camp for the Olympics and he was walking with a limp. The brother was not healthy. And then we see that he went through a procedure. It had nothing to do with, with what brand he was attached to, but instead about his own health. And I feel for Kawhi. Like, he doesn't want his body to break down on him, but unfortunately, he's in that percentage of NBA players or athletes, pro-level athletes, that body cannot withstand the 82-game season slash a postseason run. And I'm looking at this, this team, and I think when healthy, this team can be competitive, right? Not competitive for a championship by any means, but like, if you told me that if Kawhi Leonard has a healthy season, this team was the eighth seed, I wouldn't call you crazy. Like, there are some things on the roster that I like. We're going to talk about James Harden in a minute. But like Dear Jones Jr. just came off his uh, career year. I don't know if he's going to be able to replicate that, but I trust in Dear Jones Jr. Zubac is one of the most underrated players in all of basketball. Norman Powell is a perennial six man of the year candidate. Norman Powell, I mean, I'm sorry, um, uh, Chris Dunn just came off a career year as well. We hit the three point shot. He's one of the best hard nosed defenders in all of basketball. There is some good stuff here, but unfortunately, they're in the middle of the pack. And in a lot of cases, I'm okay with being middle of the pack for a lot of organizations. This is not one of those teams. This offseason, they lost Paul George to the Philadelphia 76ers, and they signed James Harden to a two-year, $70 million contract. And shout out to, to James for getting that bag that he's been wanting for the last couple seasons. But the first thing I thought of when this report came out is, who were they bidding against? One of my least favorite things is when teams pay too much money for a player. And listen, James Harden's an all-time legend. He's one of the greatest shooting guards slash point guards of all time, depending on what era we want to talk about. 
but there was nobody in the league that was paying him $35 million annually. And I know you probably want to do good by your players, but also you got to think about it as a business, right? There was nobody that had cap space that was going to be interested enough in the 34-year-old James Harden based on the last season we just had for him and think that he's a $35 million player. The only thing I could think about is when they did trade for him, they told him, hey, we're going to take care of you this offseason. No matter what, we're going to take care of you. And they, they did that. So they got an old 34-year-old um, James Harden on a $70 million contract. Kawhi Leonard extension, $130, $153 million. That is a lot of money tied up to A, an injury-prone superstar and a declining superstar. And like, I don't know if this is me being harsh, but this is my honest opinion right now. I think where they are as a franchise might be dead last in all of basketball. Is that crazy? Is that crazy? Because at least the real, because this is not a really bad constructed team. Do not get me wrong. But at least the really bad teams have their own draft picks. You can, you can give, like the Brooklyn Nets, we already made a video about, they're going to be awful. But at least they're almost guaranteed a top five pick this year. At, at least the Charlotte Hornets have their own pick. No disrespect to Charlotte. They might be okay this season. We'll talk about that in a, a, a later video. But at least those teams have a, a potential roadmap to make themselves competitive and good. The Clippers don't have that. And if Kawhi Leonard is dealing with this injury, and with Kawhi Leonard's injury history, we never really know the significance of it. If you tell me Kawhi Leonard plays 30 games this year, if that, this team is going to be giving up a high lottery pick to OKC. That is scary to me. And like, again, what Loris Frank said is completely true. When Kawhi Leonard is healthy, he's one of the best players in the entire world. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Even if his defense has been declining over the last couple of years, he's still one of the best players in the world when healthy. I don't know if there's general, general men's across basketball that will be giving you assets in return for Kawhi Leonard because he is a question mark with his health. The Warriors would love Kawhi Leonard. The, the, the Grizzlies would love Kawhi Leonard. But do we see them giving up real assets to get him if they're not even sure if he can withstand a 16-game postseason run? No. So what do you do? Like the only option is, again, just write it out what you have now. When, if Kawhi Leonard is healthy, win half of your games. If he's not healthy, <laughs> win a lot less than that. And just accept the fact that you are defeated. That you're going to give up some picks over the next couple years. Or you sell extremely low on these dudes. And you do the old Brooklyn Nets method after the KG thing fell apart. They sold the few assets of players that they had for a really bad draft capital. And they accepted the fact that we will be giving up a top pick every single season. We can't control that. That deal is done. But what we can't control is trying to develop the players that we do have. Um, so that means that the pick swap that we have for 2025, the OKC Thunder pick that's probably going to be 29 or 30th, we're going to draft well there and focus on his development versus focusing on the aging player in Kawhi Leonard and James Harden. I want to make a full deep dive on this um, eventually. And I just, I just don't know if I have the time to because I'm also doing this series where I talk about all 30 NBA teams. When you are a contention level team and you still and you keep your own first round picks, it is so very important that you hit. And I don't mean you got to hit by getting Tyrese Maxey, right? I feel like that's the extreme of it. A team can't be a competitive team and then go get Tyrese Maxey all the time, right? But when you have the 30th overall pick, I think it is important that you hit that pick to get a good player, a rotational player. And that is one thing the Clippers have missed out on, at least as of right now. Like I watch Summer League, is Jordan Miller could be that guy potentially. I don't really know. Again, Summer League tells you something but nothing at the same time. But I, I believe that Jordan Miller is a good NBA, or will be a good NBA player. But other than that, these other picks have not hit. I mean, they, they did hit on Terrence Mann, who was a 48th overall pick in 2019. That's a really big hit. Terrence Mann is a good NBA player. But like the Kobe Brown was a miss, at least as of today. Who knows? He was only drafted last year, right? Um, you got like the, the Abite, I didn't even know how to pronounce bro's name. They drafted Jalen Hands at the end of the second round. This is like they haven't owned their own picks, but when they have had their picks, they have not hit on them. And that's that's kind of important when you're at this point of your your um, your history. I don't know, man. I guess I'm just really sad that we won't be seeing Kawhi Leonard be healthy. Um, and I guess we, I should have came to this realization years ago, but it was just tougher for me to accept that fact um because that playoff last year was really really bad and y'all know he's a playoff riser he always has been but you could tell his body was not in it and um that carried over to the offseason and it looks like it might carry over to the regular season too so i guess it's james harden cook session right him and zoo him and zoo two-man game all season long who knows what that's gonna bring let me know what you think about the clippers slash Kawhi leonard's injury um an unfortunate bit of news but we'll see how the clippers react to it I mean, they have an arena opening up. And I honestly, I can't help but to think that's part of the the motive to keep 
the the few older guys together. The motive to extend Kawhi Leonard, the motive to extend James Harden is because they have this brand new arena opening up and you can't convince your fans to come to this new arena to watch Kobe Brown. You can't convince your new fans to watch what Cam Christie and when instead we're going to say Kawhi Leonard and I I'm I'm not here to be a conspiracy theorist but I kind of think about you remember that year um this is rookie Zion Williamson where they opened up the floodgates for people to be season ticket holders in New Orleans. And then after they had sold out all the tickets, they said, oh, yeah, um, uh, Zion Williamson is injured, by the way. I, we, uh, we forgot to tell you that, but Zion Williamson is injured. That's kind of the vibes I'm getting here. Like, we're going to sell a hell of tickets to, to the Intuit Dome. Kawhi Leonard might be ready for the season. We don't really know. We think he's going to be good. We're optimistic about him being good. And they might already know that he's going to miss a few months or a few weeks into the season. But they just want to continue to sell those tickets to the Intuit Dome. By all pictures that I've seen, the Dome looks di like disgusting. I can't wait to be there. Whether Kawhi Leonard's there or not, I I'll check into a game or two.